The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results related in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. So guys, let's go ahead and kick this party off. Um, I, you know what, this is a hard slide for me to show because this is something as growing into Optavia is something that is very, it's less important for me now, uh, talking about my qualifications and certifications from a fitness standpoint, just because um, we, we focus on so many amazing things with Optavia and the growth is not about title. So when I put this out here, I put this out for one reason. I put this out here because I want people to know that I come from a, a wide variety of different modalities in fitness, from group exercise to hard style kettlebell, uh, CrossFit level one, suspension training, National Academy of Sports Medicine. And I just put that out there for people who uh, sometimes watch this and they, they may wonder, well, maybe that's just your side of things. But that's why I put that slide out there. But let's go ahead and just dive in, guys. What, what is exercise, right? What is exercise? Well, exercise is defined as deliberate activity, vigorous enough to enhance your level of fitness. Okay? So it is the most important predictor of longevity to optimize your health. And this is our exercise activity thermogenesis, or our EAT. You'll hear all the time, we talk about in the beginning of Habits of Health, NEAT, our non-exercise. We will be getting into EAT activity. We'll be getting into exercise. So that is the definition of that. Now, looking through the lens of, of a health coach, we have to look at this from a different angle. We are looking at small micro habits over time to create a lifetime of health. And these should be activities that you can do forever. And the question that I ask everybody is, are you looking for health benefits? And this is your why. This is your fitness and your health why. Are you looking for health benefits? Do you want to improve your fitness? Or is this a hobby or a sport? And I have to tell you, if you're training for a hobby or a sport, this doesn't necessarily qualify for our, our healthy habits, for getting into our healthy. And I think somebody who would might might it, it, it be an example of that is let's say Dr. Anderson and his heli, heli skiing. Okay. Heli skiing is a sport. I think he'll be the first to tell you it is probably not a habit of health. Okay. Because it can be uh, dangerous, right? So if your goal is to increase um, potential lifespan and to uh, increase your fitness level, as we talked about in the first slide, then awesome. That's the direction we're going. If it's a hobby or a sport, and you can take this as a marathon, you can take this as a CrossFit, um, as uh, maybe you just enjoy working out at the highest level that you can. This is ultimately a sport. And, um, and I kind of want to just put that in, the, in, in your mind so you can kind of think about that as we move on. Now, as we start out in exercise, we want to obviously make sure that we can reduce the risk of injury and any possible medical uh, complications. Okay, so we always want to make sure that you are in the condition to be ready to take on some of these physical challenges. And most importantly, we want to create success and victories. And the thing I love about Habits of Health, guys, is that literally we are creating wins and victories in people's lives. And it is not about, um, you know, a, a beatdown of a workout that causes people like questioning their existence here on earth, right? It's like, why did that just happen to me? It's like, I have no interest in ever doing that again. So that is not the goal of exercise. Exercise really needs to be, we have to look at it as a gift, a gift of what the body can do, a gift of, um, the, well, coming up on the next one. Uh, not a chore, right? Not something that is just uh, a painful chore that you really despise and you don't really have a desire to go do, but you feel like for some reason you need to do it. So here's what we know what the benefits of exercise are. Immediately, improved mood, increased attention span, increased performance, increased creativity, okay? These are all fantastic and amazing things that I think all of us want this in, in our lives, right? What we know over time is that it will increase energy expenditure, it will improve cardiovascular uh, conditioning, of course, and really help to build and maintain the systems uh, of the bones and muscle structures to keep you fit. And as we all know that as we age, sarcopenia is a big deal. This is like a breakdown of muscle tissue due to aging or inactivity. 
that can ultimately cause an imbalances, falls, and that downward spiral that is really hard for us to be able to overcome um, and, and, and live the lifestyle that we want to live. So these things, now it, put a one in the chat, but let's put a two, we already did one. Let's put a two in the chat if you've heard any of these statements, okay? Because if all of those things are so great about exercise, then have you heard that it will take you out of fat burn, that it will stop or stall your weight loss? Look at all these twos, we've heard these things. You will lose muscle and you will enter dun, 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 starvation mode, right? One of my favorite topics. Oh, we're gonna have to do lots more of these guys. I get excited about this. So we're gonna have to do lots more of these in the future to get into all these details. But yes, people, if, you're, if you can't hear, if you're not watching this, then people are chiming in on the chat right now. Everybody on here has heard these things. Now, I want to explain and maybe connect some of the dots for everybody on here on what some of these things really mean so that we don't have to be fearful of them. Okay, I call it the fitness boogeyman. There is no fitness boogeyman. Okay, everything we can, we can connect the dots to science and we can determine uh, best chance of success by breaking it down to the ridiculous for some of these things. Okay, so kicks you out of fat burn. All right, guys, so here's the number one thing. Exercise can actually enhance fat burn by utilizing your stored glycogen and carbohydrates. Now what we know about fat burn is, and we'll get into that on the next slide in a little more detail, but we know that that's after you've utilized your carbohydrates and you don't have a lot present, then your body's gonna tap into stored body fat or dietary fat, and it's gonna use fats for energy, okay? When we exercise, we actually, the only way to get that glycogen out of your muscle cells is to actually work out, okay, or to move, okay? So, now remember, fat burn is also different than weight loss. So you can be in a fat burning mode, you can be burning predominantly fat and still not be in a weight loss, okay? So they're not, they're two different things. Um, so what is fat burn? Well. We're gonna get into a, well, if we're doing five and one, we're gonna get into a light ketogenic state. When you get into this state, you're gonna notice you have reduced hunger, you have improved mental clarity, and you tap into stored body fat for energy. Now there again, it's like, who wouldn't want that? So when carbohydrates are used or burned up, then we get into this fat burning state. Now we have enough stored glycogen in our muscles to essentially do like 90 minutes of endurance activity. So here's what, we, what I've really seen working with all the people that I've worked with on this in particular. Um, but we see that inappropriate adjustments sometimes that our exercising clients do is the actual thing that's kicking us out of fat burn. Okay, so um, we, we've heard on calls before, I think a Amber Smithson has, has uh, coined the term five and one-ish, right? We've heard five and one-ish. I like to call it a dirty five and one, but that's basically doing five and one with fueling hacks, maybe beverages that you didn't know had calories in them, maybe additional condiments that you're not measuring, um, adding extra calories because, well, I'm working out, I should be able to add extra calories or extra protein that may be above and beyond. So that is essentially five and one-ish or dirty five and one. When that happens, um, oftentimes we're in this gray zone. Keep in mind, fat burn is kind of like boiling water. You're either at 211 or below or you're above 212. Okay, when we're in that, we have all those benefits. When we're not, it just takes us a little time to break back into it and feel that way again. So what most people identify with is what we call compensation or exercise induced hunger. Now, when you work out and you work out at a pretty high level, but this could also be if you rake the lawn or, or you, know, you uh, shoveled snow in your driveway or whatever, and you broke apart muscle tissue, okay, which happens when we exercise and we do movements. So you broke apart muscle cells and your body's saying we need to repair those. So that signal gets put to, sent up to your brain and your body says you need to eat. You need to eat and you need to repair. You need to get the branch chain amino acids in there so that we can repair the, the, the tissue and we can get back into a, a strong mode in case we need to run away from danger or whatever. So when that happens, it is kind of like a hunger that is pretty hard to, like willpower will not get you through this hunger. It's a pretty uncontrollable hunger. So what we want to take a look at is, is that intensity of your exercise appropriate? Because if we did a lot of muscle damage above and beyond what your body can repair from, then you're going to have excessive compensation and you're going to feel hungry. And one of the things that we know is going to challenge you and stop challenge and choose on a regular basis is going to be that that ability to stay in a controlled um, satiety or, or uh, appetite control, okay? So that's one of the things that we gotta take a look at immediately is make sure that intensity is appropriate. All right, incidental or purposely falling out of uh, program compliance. Now, here's the big one, guys. Studies show people underreport their calories by 40%, 
Okay, now what's great about five and one, and this is why it's so successful, is that we take care of five of those fuelings, have our portion controlled, and they have exactly what's on the labels, what's in the, in, the, in, the, in the fueling, right? So now we have that last lean and green that's kind of up for debate. So if we are eyeballing it, we're not measuring, weighing, that kind of thing. Somebody who's really tight on program and following the guide will sometimes even be uh, 15 to 25% off. And when I say this is incidental, this could be you didn't realize that your coffee creamer had calories in it. You didn't realize that you know, having a bunch of uh, sugar-free gum actually adds up to, to a certain amount, okay? So that's something that we got to take a look at because that's that 15 to 25%. Now, if it's purposely, um, how I, how I, what I say about this is you guys have heard, heard me talk about this before, but that's, if you've got a tablespoon of peanut butter, that's either a tablespoon or that's a tablespoon, right? <laughs> right? The heaping tablespoon. I also call it the uh, pecking chicken uh, 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 deal, which basically what that means is while you're measuring and weighing your chicken on your scale, you're also pecking at the chicken skin and some of the things on the side that you don't actually weigh and measure that. And then you have this perfectly controlled meal, but you snacked on everything else all the way around it. So uh, guys, the reason I'm seeing that people are saying, hey, I'm guilty of this, I'm guilty. The reason I know it, because I'm guilty of it all the time, right? The reason I know these things is because I'm a human being too. So I, I, am for, I, I go through this and I have to stop challenge and choose whenever I feel myself doing the same thing. So um, that is just something that, that just happens. All right. Let's move on to the next topic, guys. Weight loss will slow or stop if you're working out. Well, once again, if we are kind of uh, going in and out of uh, fat burn, then we're going to see some increase and some decrease along with the glycogen that will be stored. Solutions on that. Confirm accuracy and your meal plan by weighing and measuring. And then also remember, if we stay in that fat burn, then we're going to be, uh, we're going to have a consistency and we're not gonna see those fluctuations, even though it's not fat gain. Like, let's not get concerned with the fat gain. It's not, it's a weight gain, but it's not fat. So we don't have to be concerned about that. Now, starvation mode. Here's the thing about starvation mode. The way most people talk about starvation mode uh, is inaccurate. The one thing that we can actually do is we can actually go without food until we die. Like, we, we will never get stranded on a desert island and come off that island larger or the same size, okay? If you get locked into a cage and you're without food for a long period of time, you're not getting bigger in that cage. Uh, you're only gonna get smaller, okay? So that will happen. But what, let's talk about what starvation mode really, really is for the average person, okay? This just means that you either voluntarily or involuntarily reduce your need to activity. Your need to activity, as explained over and over again in Habits of Health, is going to be the largest uh, amount of calories that you burn throughout the day uh, without exercise. But now, if you did a great workout and you said, because I worked out, I'm not taking the dog for a walk, or because I worked out, I'm just going to sit on the couch and I'm going to watch Game of Thrones, um, like all eight seasons, okay? If you do those things, then you've actually reduced the amount of meat activity points or calories that you would have burned. And that slows the process down. Now, if that's happening because you're just tired, like your workout just beat you down and you are tired, then again, we have to take a look at that intensity. And that intensity is probably too high. We're going to get into some recommendations a little bit later on what that looks like and how to make sure. Uh, here's the great thing, guys. Go on, go, and I forgot to mention this, but going back to that slide of the certifications and everything, um, what's going to be really cool moving forward is you're going to be able to take the, uh, the new Habits of Health system and you're gonna walk through your actual journey and be able to program yourself through this. You won't need any of those certifications because guys, it's dialed, it's dialed in when you just follow the system and the process. And every great model has it. Um, National Academy of Sports Medicine has um, the optimum uh, sports performance model, which means that you take it from stabilization and you move it all the way to power. So that's really what we've done here, or what Dr. Anderson has done, which is in Habits of Health, is taking you from a walking program and getting you into uh, all the way up into high intensity interval training. It's pretty cool. So when you follow that, you're gonna have all the, all the details you're ever gonna need to know. Now, here's your solutions. Remember that 20,000 uh, steps a week goal is something that you actually build into. Like you may be at 10,000 right now. Um, you may be at 5,000 and that's okay. But if you look back at your Fitbit or whatever device that you use and you notice that you worked out that day, but you also reduced all the number of your steps, then you gotta take a look at that, right? 
So, and then of course, confirm your accuracy of your meals by weighing and measuring. I mean, that's always gonna be the most important thing is make sure that you're compliant to the program that you're following, whether it's three and three, uh, four and two, um, or whatever. Now here's the one that all trainers will scare everybody over. And I know because I've been in those shoes before, right? So this is, and it's, if you don't understand this, uh, this information, then, then it's a scary thing. Um, the research shows us guys that traditional means of dietary weight loss will result in a quarter pound to 0.5 pounds of lean body mass lost with every pound of weight loss. Okay. So what that means is essentially you're going to lose lean body mass or at least measurable what's going to be measured as lean body mass. And here's something that I really think is important for people to understand. If you are a larger individual, say uh, 250 to 300 pounds, you have a carrying capacity that your body needs to actually be able to support itself. As you drop body fat and weight, you're going to not need that strength in your lower body or anywhere in your body to hold up that frame because that frame no longer exists. Okay. So it's actually like you're reducing the weight and the workout load because you no longer have to support it all the time. So what that means is that when you take a look at your lean body mass um, at your heaviest weight, as you get down into the desired weight that you have in your head, chances are you're going to see some drop of lean body mass because that weight no longer has to be supported because um, you're a much smaller individual. So that's nothing to be freaked out about. Okay. Now we also know that if you're not in that gray zone or in that boiling point area, right? If you're below that, a ketogenic plan has muscle sparing properties. Okay. So if you're in fat burn, you're more likely to maintain as much of that lean body mass as you can, providing that it's the appropriate amount of lean body mass for your frame. And then here's the other cool thing. If you're working out, you're gonna have an even greater chance of maintaining that lean body mass. And in some cases, we've actually seen people increase lean body mass during this phase because you're getting additional protein that they may not have gotten before. They're getting amazing nutrients that you may not have gotten before either. So that's a great thing. So that whole you know, saying of if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Well, during exercise, you're using those muscles and you're telling your body that that is an important thing to hold on to in case we get into an emergency situation. You got to run for help, whatever the case is. Like your body knows that, hey, these biceps, they just don't look good. They also, you need them for something, right? So we have to work the body in order for that to be a signal to your brain saying, keep on and hold on to this muscle. This would have translated into you having to, uh, to do uh, uh, harvest, harvesting or hunting or whatever we had to do in order to go find food, okay? And then of course there's nutrient timing and when's the best time to have your fuelings. You know, Dr. Anderson will suggest of course that you have your fueling before your workout and then after, uh, especially if it's an intense workout. Um, so we'll get more into that later. Um, stalls weight loss. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. Number one, this, let's just talk about the solution. Um, go off of measurements, go off of body fat percentage, go off of your clothes fitting differently and the way that you feel. Because if we have these fluctuations, if you're working out and if, if you are dialed in on the program, the Optavia guide will dial you right in. If those things are happening, chances are you are seeing results no matter what. So let's not get overly, um, uh, you know, pay too much attention to that scale because it will create some challenges. Um, it's just the way it is, especially with the, uh, the ability for your body to hang on to that glycogen and that water that we talked about. So, okay. So here, let's get into some of the details because we got about five minutes left. Um, guys, put a one in the chat if you want to have like more of these. I'm kind of now just getting warmed up. Like I feel like we could do like, uh, like a couple more hours of this. Um, so let's, so here's the other thing. On the other side of over, uh, uh, under reporting your calories is the over, um, is the over exaggeration of how hard you're working out. Okay, same study showed that people think they worked out and um, they're off by about 30%. Okay, so their intensity was 30% less than how they felt it felt. Okay, so what that means is that we have 40% over report or uh, under reporting and 30% over reporting of exercise. Guys, that's like the perfect storm, right? Perfect storm to, to be in a plateau. So here as Habits of Health will lay out is that we have our walking and fitness program. We have our resistance program and we have getting into the, the, the real meaty stuff, the high intensity interval training. Okay, so here's the thing. At your current level, if it's minimal, if you haven't been doing anything, your program when dialed in will create the calorie deficit necessary to start tapping into stored body fat and starting to create wins and victories in your weight loss goal. 
okay? If you haven't started already, why, why jump in and start exercising until you start to see some amazing results? The, uh, the weight on your joints is down, your energy is up, you now have goals that you want to achieve because you now realize it's all possible through Optavia, and then now you're gonna jump in and you're gonna start to do a little bit of exercise, okay? Meanwhile, you can be doing lighter things like your neat activities, your dance, you know, your standing and your samba and all, all the good stuff that's gonna create a, a healthier you. As we get into moderate activity, um, again, your neat activities coupled with your calorie deficit from the program is gonna put you in plenty of a calorie deficit. Now we wanna make sure that we're not in too great of a calorie deficit, so 800 to 1,000. Like we don't have to, we're not going for any records as far as how fast do we have to drop body fat because it would be better to stay consistent. Remember the lenses of a Habits of Health coach is stepping your way to long-term success. There's no reason to just dive right into it. So uh, if you can, work on the things that are going to build that program. We talked about the Optimum Sports uh, program, but that would be like work on stabilization, get your body ready for balance, get your core strong so that when you're ready and that extra weight drops off, now we can jump into some of the heavier stuff and your body's prepared for it. Okay. Now, Start increasing your daily steps to 20,000 per week. That's part of the walking programs. The way you can look at it is about five days a week at 30 minutes. Okay, so if I could tell you, all you really need to do is your walking program, resistance training twice a week, and maybe a high intensity interval training twice a week when you're in your intense activity for health benefits, keep in mind health benefits, then that's about what you need to do. And for some of you, you're gonna be relieved because not only are you gonna be at your goal weight, and everything else that you, you wanted to achieve with your fitness level is going to be there and you don't have to be at the gym for as long as most people think you need to be in the gym, okay? So here again, your exercise program and an intense activity is going to, um, your, your, your exercise itself is gonna create a high calorie deficit, um, as is your program. So consider reducing your exercise in half during this time. So if you're already intensely, act, uh, intensely exercising and you come into our five in one program, then just back off a little bit. I mean, most people in this situation are going to be athletes and they, they know what it feels like to be lightheaded and dizzy, but you don't want to be there guys. We want to make sure that it's safe and effective and that you're not having to suffer through this. So one of our plans like four, two and one or three and three is going to create an awesome calorie deficit for you to be able to go into this intensity level on your exercise and still see great results, okay? Work with your coach on that to make sure that you have the best program in place for your activity level. But um, I think that is it, guys. So we are right at 30 minutes. I can't believe it because I wanna talk forever. But um, just keep those things in mind, guys. That's where we're working towards. So first things first, walking program, working into and up to our, our, uh, uh, our 20,000 steps, and then getting into resistance training twice a week. And there's a great protocol for that. You will see that it's in the old habits of health. It's gonna be coming up in the new habits of health. Um, and then as you get into more intense activity, it's gonna be 30 minutes or so, about well, probably 20 to 30 minutes of high intensity interval training twice a week. That's not too much to ask, right? That sounds like fun. Now, if you do love to exercise because it's your, it's your, your community and you found a great place that keeps you accountable, and you have fun doing it, and we're crossing into that little bit of an extra challenge, a little bit of that sports kind of mentality, that's a whole different ball game, but I think we got that point across tonight. So guys, just really fine tune what your whys and your goals are, and that will determine how much exercise you need to do, and then we'll move forward with that, all right? Guys, make it a great night. Run this audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.